Hey, what's up everyone? John here with Web Dev for You, here to help you build beautiful websites without code in Webflow. Today we're going to go over the Adrian Murphy template found at webdevforyou.com. So I have the template here. Uh, this is a great template whether you're uh, any type of creative, a designer, illustrator, or photographer, and you want to showcase your projects in a really great way. Uh, so here I have the template. The first thing I'll do is I'll click refresh and we see we have this nice loading animation at the beginning. Then we have the menus here at the right. At the right, We have work, experience, and contact. And we have social media here on the left. We have an email link here on the right. And the title and description here on the homepage with a hero image uh, at the beginning. We also have these checkered uh, elements here on the right. This is kind of a design element using grid <clears throat> where we have a few uh, yeah checkered squares here all right and as I scroll down we have the project so we have my work and we can see that it comes in with a nice animation and the text reveals up as well all right looks good the next part is experience where it's kind of like a resume where you can put different projects from from the past here um, and we have a nice hover animation that opens up to uh, give more information about that particular experience all right looks good and then we have the contact section where the user can click send email and it'll open up the user's email client to send an email and we have the footer here at the bottom with some more text okay so that is the template um, so we're gonna go over the responsive design of the template next and then we're gonna customize the template as well All right, so here I have the template open in Sizi. Uh, here we're gonna check the responsive design of the template. The template is fully responsive to, to look good on all devices. So right now we have on desktop, um, which I just showcased on desktop. So it looks good. We have the projects, the nice animation, nice and the experience and the contact section. And then let's take a look at the iPad Pro 12.9 inch and looks good. We have it in portrait mode here. So everything is just a little bit smaller in width or uh, the site is just brought in a bit more for a tablet and looks good. And let's check out on tablet landscape and I'll just click uh, refresh here. And nice, looks good. And then we have mobile portrait. So let's take a look at the Galaxy S10. We have the nice animation. All the animation looks good there. So everything is just a bit smaller in width on mobile, but we have all the nice animations on mobile as well. All right, looks good. And then let's check out a Pixel 3. And nice. looks good awesome and the iPhone 11 Pro all right cool so it can be a really nice way to showcase projects uh, let's say you have a portfolio you can link out these projects to anything uh, an internal page external page or even a YouTube or Vimeo video and I'll showcase how to add a light box in this video tutorial to link out to a YouTube or Vimeo video. So let's take a look at the template in Webflow and I'll showcase the responsive design in Webflow. So in Webflow, we have the desktop layout, we have the tablet. So this is the tablet here. We have mobile landscape and mobile portrait. Uh, so the site can be changed. The different styling of the site can be changed across these different layouts and the design cascades down. So any changes I make to desktop will cascade down to tablet if tablet doesn't already have its own specific styling and any changes made to tablet will be applied to mobile landscape and mobile portrait. So styles don't cascade up, they cascade down. Uh, Webflow recently introduced larger breakpoints uh, so you can design for uh, larger screens and those do cascade up. All right, so that is the responsive design of the template. And the next thing I'll cover is the, uh, the structure of the template within the navigator.
All right, so here we have the navigator open. We can open it by clicking uh, this symbol here. It's kind of these three lines. And here's the structure of the site. So we have the hero section and inside of the hero section. So it's this first main section here. And inside of here, we have the hero section uh, overlay, uh, which is this green panel here. And we can see that it's that green panel because if we go to the background color, we can see that it's this aquamarine color. The next element we have is the logo wrapper. This contains the logo image or the logo here and the nav wrapper. So the nav wrapper has the nav link block. So we have uh, three in here. So we have work, experience, and contact. And inside of here, we have the inner wrapper, which contains the number and the text. And then we have the nav link underlined. So we have three of those and that can all be customized and edited within the template. The next thing we have is the grid wrapper. Uh, so the grid wrapper is that checkerboard uh, design here. So if we open up the grid wrapper, it, it, it does have a grid display setting uh, here. So we can note the grid display setting right over here. And here we can see that it has some blocks that have a background color of black with an opacity of 10. And we can change that color if we'd like, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it that color uh, because it just creates that nice uh, checkerboard effect here. All right, cool. The next element is the hero content, which has this text here. Uh, it has the H1 heading and the H2 heading here at the bottom. All right, and then we have the footer here on the left that has the social media icons. Right here it has the social icon wrapper and each wrapper is a social icon. So we have Behance, Dribble, and LinkedIn. And then we have the footer block on the right which has the, the email here uh, where the user can click to open up the email client and send an email. And then we have the hero uh, background image. Uh, so yeah, the hero background image is the main image here. And just to showcase the hero section overlay, if I were to hide the hero background image, like so, we can see we have that overlay in the background, that aquamarine overlay. Um, so that's just to showcase it uh, there, but that's that green panel that comes in from the top to the bottom initially uh, for the animation. So that is the hero section. The next thing, next section we'll go over is the work section. So this is where you can add new projects and customize the current projects. So if I open up the work section, we have the work content wrapper. Then we have the hero text here, some things I've built. We have the heading, the uh, H1 heading, the paragraph, and then we have six project wrappers. So we currently have six projects. And uh, if I open up one of the projects, we have the project image. And inside of the pro project image, we have this project image overlay. So if I select the project image overlay, and I set the display setting to none, we can see the images are there. So the overlay is to create that block reveal effect. So initially we cannot see the image, but as we scroll, the block moves from left to right and it reveals the image. And because the project image has an overflow of hidden, we don't see that block move out of the project image. So it just creates a nice block reveal effect. Okay, so I'll go ahead and bring that block back then we have the project details wrapper and this includes the work type the h3 heading the paragraph and the visit link so we can link out this visit link to anything we can link it out to a url uh, a page a page section uh, an email a telephone number or a file um, and then i'll go over how to link to a video as well inside the visit link we have the visit link text and then we have this nice icon letting the user know that they're gonna be taken to uh, an external link or a, a different link away from the page. Okay, so we have six of those. So one thing to note here is that the, the last project wrapper, it has a combo class of last, and the only thing that's different for this last one is the margin from the bottom. The other project wrappers have a margin of 100 pixels, but the last one has a margin of zero pixels, and that's just a, a design element so that it's not too far from the experience section. So when we create a new project, we just wanna make sure that the last uh, project here has a margin of zero pixels. Okay, so the next section is the experience section. So I'll open this up. And again, it has the hero text block, the heading, and then we have these accordion wrappers. 
Um, so these accordion wrappers, they have a hover effect. So when we hover, <clears throat> it opens up and we see more content here and looks good. Um, yeah, so we're gonna also add another accordion wrapper. And again, the last accordion wrapper has a combo class of last uh, because all of the other ones before the last one have an underline here at the bottom, but the last one doesn't. So we wanna add a combo class and add that underline at the bottom or remove that underline there for the last one. Okay, and then we have the contact section uh, here at the bottom. Um, so this has the hero text block, the heading, the paragraph, and the visit link where the user can open up uh, their email client to send an email. And then we have this footer info here at the bottom. Nice, and the visit link has yeah, the link text and this icon here. Yeah, and then we have some copyright info here at the bottom. Okay, so that is the structure of the site in the navigator. The next thing I'm gonna cover is customizing the template. So we're gonna change all the colors of the template. We're gonna change the hero image and we're gonna do this all in a few minutes. Okay, so we're gonna customize the template. The color scheme that I've used are the, the two colors that I'm gonna use for this redesign or this customization is these colors here. So we have Lucky Point, which is kind of this darker bluish purple color. And then we have this cranberry color, which is more of like a pink uh, kind of red color there. Um, so what I've done here is I've used, uh, let me go back here, I've used pigment.shapefactory to use these two colors. And I've used their duotone feature to download images from Unsplash. So I have the images here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop into Webflow and I'll just grab it here and I'll just click hold and drag and drag those images in there. So I have compressed them so they're a bit smaller, the PNG images. Um, so it looks good. And nice. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is replace the hero image. So I'm going to go ahead into the navigator and I'm going to select the, the background hero image here. So let me just collapse these. So it's hero BG image, hero background image. So I'll go into the backgrounds and click. I'll click choose image and I'll select this image here. All right, so this is our new designer here in the background and, and nice. All right, cool. So the next thing I'm going to do is replace change the color of this green panel that comes in from the top to the bottom. So I'll go ahead and select the hero section overlay. And this is where we're gonna get into global swatches. So within the template, you, you'll note that certain elements have a global swatch applied to it. And a global swatch is noted by this little small triangle in the lower right. So if I click, we can see we have all of these global swatches applied to the template. So to change a color across the entire template, all I would need to do is change the global swatch. And we also have a global swatch section uh, within the style guide that lets you know what elements are using uh, what colors. So I'll go over that in a second. I can quickly showcase it actually. Um, <clears throat> so here are all the global swatches and what elements are using what swatch. So I'll cover that in more detail in a second, but we're just gonna replace the colors inside of global swatches to change uh, the color of the template. Um, so I'll go ahead and again, I'll select the hero section overlay and scroll down and select the aquamarine. And to edit a global swatch, we just need to open it and click edit swatch, this pencil icon, and then we can completely change the color. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the color to this cranberry. So I'll copy this hex code here, open up Webflow and paste that color in there and click enter. And then I'll go ahead and change the color name here to cranberry and click save. And now we, we see that this is changed here as well because that aquamarine color was applied to these links as well and uh, to these social media icons here. So now if I preview, the panel is now that cranberry color and it matches the theme of the template. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and change the color of this text to to be more white. So I'll select the global swatch, click edit, 
and just change the color here to white. And then I'll just call this white here. Save. Same for this H2 heading. It has Alice blue opacity of 90. So I'll go ahead and change it to white. Or actually, let me select the global swatch first. Click edit and change it to white here. And I'll just say white opacity 90. Okay, and then this text here is white. That looks good. This email link has an opacity of 80. I'll select the global swatch, click edit, just to make it white. And I'll just say white opacity 80. And this white just makes the text pop a bit more on this kind of purple color. So I kind of like it a bit better there. And then the social icons, I'm going to edit the global swatch. And okay, that's all good. That's white. Cool. So this icon here, this logo is an image. Uh, it does come in the preset icon pack with the template. So you could open it up in like, let's say Illustrator and kind of change the accent color there to match the accent color of your template. Or you'd probably replace the logo uh, anyways. So you could just replace the logo here. Uh, but just like that, we've customized the colors of the template of the hero section. And it looks good. We see that checkered animation or that checkered styling is still on the right. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and leave that uh, there because I think it looks good. All right, cool. <clears throat> so the next thing we're going to cover is the work section. So I'll scroll down. I'm going to go ahead and change the background color of the work section. So I'll select it, go to backgrounds. Right now it's uh, a midnight blue color. So I'm going to go to this color and select the lucky point color here and go into the global swatch, click edit and paste this hex color in there, paste, and I'll call this lucky point and click save. All right, so now this color matches more the hero section and it looks good. Uh, the next thing, we'll uh, change the color here of this uh, text. So let's see what color it is. It's aquamarine with an opacity of 80. So I'll select the cranberry color and open up the global swatch, click edit paste this color in here and let's make sure that we stay consistent with the opacity or the alpha change it back to 80 and I'll call this cranberry opacity 80 same with this visit website we're going to go ahead and select it and use that global swatch of cranberry with an opacity of 80 okay so now let's edit the images to match more the color of the uh, the template so I'll select the project image overlay scroll to the top and set it to display none. So now we have these images. I'm gonna go ahead and replace all the images. So I'll scroll down to the background with the project image selected. So here we have the project image and the, uh, the overlay. So I'll select the project image, choose image, and I'll just go ahead and start replacing the images here. So let me choose, yeah, let me choose this image here. Nice, and then let's change the overlay color. So I'm gonna go ahead and select, uh, let's see, let's select, let's select this darker cranberry color. So I'll select this here, go into here and go into the overlay, select the color and paste that color in there and give it an alpha of let's say 40. Yeah, that looks pretty good, maybe 30. Yeah, we'll do an alpha of 30 there. Or actually, yeah, let's do 40. If I want to change it, I can easily change it later. I'm going to click the plus sign here to create this new swatch. And I'm going to call it cranberry, uh, let's say cranberry dark 40 or opacity 40 and click create. Okay, so now we just created a new global swatch that I can apply to the other images. All right, so let's go to the next project image. So when you click to the next one, you'll notice that it has a combo class of two. So by applying a combo class, we can apply a unique uh, or add a unique image to this section here. Okay, so I'll select it, click choose image, and let's select this one here. I'll go ahead into the overlay and select the cranberry color there. Okay. Select the next image, it has a combo class of three, so we know it's a unique image. And I'll select this one here, select it, the overlay, change the color, and select this one here, 
choose image. This one has a combo class of four, as we can see here. So I'll choose the image and select this image here. Change the overlay and nice. And we have this one. This has a combo class of five. So I'll choose image and select this one here. Change the overlay. Perfect. And let's do this last one. It has a combo class of six. So choose image. And I'll do this one here. Actually, I kind of liked yeah, this one. Cool. And change the overlay. So I'm noticing this overlay is a little bit too bright. So let me try changing the opacity. Let me try 20. Um, so actually, let me select the global swatch. Click edit and try changing the opacity here. Let's see. Yeah, I think 20 might work a bit better here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So I'll click save. We can see it, it changes it for all the images because all the images have the same uh, combo class applied to it. All right, so just like that, we've changed the color of the images. <clears throat> so right down here for experience, uh, yeah, let me uh, bring back the the project image overlay. So we've edited, edited all the images. So I'll bring back the overlay and then we'll have that block reveal effect. All right, and then for experience, all this text is already changed, um, except, except for this Alice blue with an opacity of seven, 70. I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and edit it, change it to white, and change it, the color here to white, and click save. All right, and this text here, I'm also gonna set it to uh, white, and looks good. All right, and this text has already changed because it had a combo class of cranberry opacity 80 applied to it. Cool, um, and that's it. So just like that, we've changed all the colors. Let me check this down here. This is using Alice with uh, an opacity of 30. So let me change it to white and I'll just say white opacity 30. Nice, and it applies it to these as well. Very good, okay, cool. So just like that, we've completely customized the template. <clears throat> We've changed all the colors, all the images. So I'll go ahead and preview. And nice. Scroll down. Those images match the color of the template. Perfect. So you can see how easily it is to customize the template to match your colors, kind of match your projects, and everything like that. So we, we used a combination of global swatches along with uh, replacing um, yeah, global swatches and replacing the images to match the color of the template. Perfect. So the next thing I'm going to cover is adding a new project and a new experience to the template. All right, so to add a new project, it's fairly straightforward. So let's just open the work section and we have the project wrappers here. Uh, so one thing you'll note, so let me go ahead and um, set the image overlay to a display of none. Uh, one thing you'll note is that they alternate. So we have the image on the left here, right, left, right, left, and right. And again, the last project has the last combo class applied to it with a margin at the bottom of zero. Um, so I wanna go ahead and copy this, uh, the second to last project wrapper because it's alternating. So I want it to alternate again for this next one. And I'll go ahead and select the work content wrapper and hit command V to paste. So now we have uh, this, this project here. So we notice it's too close to this last one. So what we wanna do to the second to last project is remove the combo class of last. So I'll select it, select remove class, and it adds that 100 pixel margin at the bottom. Then we wanna select the last uh, project this doesn't have a combo class, so I'll give it the combo class of last. And here, um, it yeah, and here I want to remove this 100 pixel uh, margin. So initially it didn't add it because with combo classes, um, so if I select the, or actually project two, okay, yeah, that, that works. Um, project wrapper, nice. Okay, yeah, so initially it didn't add it because this 
this had uh, a combo class of two and last, and then this last one just had last. So if there's other combo classes associated, then um, that particular styling won't just be applied if the combo class is added. So hopefully that made sense, but basically if uh, the last project doesn't have a uh, 100 pixel margin from the bottom, just add a combo class of last, and if it still doesn't apply it after adding the last combo class, then go ahead and just change it here uh, manually after adding the combo class. All right, so if you have any questions about that, definitely let me know. Cool, so just like that, we added a seventh project. We can go ahead and change all the text, and I'll say project seven, or project number seven. I can edit all the text here. Um, so let me select it. This is project number seven. And cool. So one thing I didn't do earlier as well, um, let's go ahead and change the text here. I just want to kind of showcase that you can change the title as well. So I'll go ahead and change the name. So hi, my name is uh, Michael James. Cool. And we can change this text here as well. So to edit text, you just double click and you can edit all the text within the template. All right, cool. So we added the seventh project. Let me go ahead and bring back the, uh, the project image overlay. So I'll click display block. Oh, let's also change the image. So I'll select this project image, remove the combo class five, and add the combo class of seven. And then go down to the image, choose image, and we'll select a new image here. All right, so let me do that one more time. Cool. All right, so just like that, we added a new project. I'll bring back the project image overlay, and let's go ahead and preview. So I'll go ahead and preview here and scroll down. And there is project number seven. Looks good. Okay, so that's how we add a new project. Let's go ahead and add a new experience. So I'll go into the experience section and I'll go ahead and open it up here. Open up the experience content wrapper. Here we have four accordion wrappers. So again, a similar kind of idea to this one, it has the last combo class. So the last combo class here doesn't have an underline applied. So if we click here, we see the underline has been removed, but these other ones, these other accordion wrappers do have an underline uh, applied. All right, so for this, I'll go ahead and select this accordion wrapper, hit Command C to copy and Command V to paste. Okay, so what we wanna do here is remove the combo class from the second to last accordion wrapper. So I'll click the drop down here and click remove class. So the underline gets applied. So if we go to the last uh, accordion wrapper, it has the combo class of last. Um, so the last accordion wrapper will always have the combo class last. Uh, so the underline gets removed. Okay, so that's how we add an accordion wrapper. Uh, very straightforward. Again, we just double click to edit the text and we can add as many uh, different experiences here as we'd like. So now we have five. So here I can go in into the last one and double click, change it to experience um, number five. All right, cool. So nice, just like that, we've added a new experience. Nice, so the next thing I'm gonna cover is adding a video within a light box. Um, so we're gonna link out the projects rather to an internal link or external link. So we could select like this first one here select the visit link and link it to, um, you know, dribble.com. So now for this first project, if I preview and then click on visit website, it'll open up uh, Dribble. So instead of linking to an external page, we're gonna go ahead and link to a YouTube video within the site. Okay, so to link to a YouTube video, we wanna use the Lightbox element within Webflow. So we wanna go ahead and click this visit link and go to the elements panel, and let's try adding a Lightbox. So I'm gonna select the Lightbox element here. I'm going to click, hold, and drag and try to place it within the visit link. And we can see we get an error message. So it says Lightbox link cannot be placed within a link. Um, so yeah, so that makes sense. You can't have a link in a link within Webflow. So if I Try again, we can see we get this error message. So what we need to do here is select the visit link uh, option, right click, 
and select convert to div block. So this will uh, yeah, convert it to a div block rather than a link block. So we can add a lightbox link inside of here. So here I'll click convert to div block. Then I'll click, uh, click plus the add elements panel, click the lightbox link. And here we have the lightbox link. So initially it comes with the image, with an image. So I just want to click and delete the image inside of there. And then I want to take this lightbox link in the navigator, bring it to the top right below the visit link and then place the link text inside of the light box. So I just click, hold and drag and move it to the right to place it inside of the uh, light box link. I'll select the light box link, go to the styles panel and give it a flex setting of flex and align stretch and justify start. Or I could say align center as well, but by default it's align stretch uh, there. doesn't really alter the style, but uh, yeah, it looks good there. So we give it a flex setting. So the icon here and the text are horizontal and next to each other. And then for the lightbox link, I want to go down to typography because it has a blue underline. Uh, you can't really see it here, but it's, it's there. Uh, it's a text decoration. So here for the decoration, I'll just say none to remove that underline. Okay, and just like that, we have a lightbox link. So the last thing we need to do is add a video. So we could go to the element settings here we could link it to an image or a video. So if I choose an image um, here, let me see what image we're actually using. Um, so we're using that first image, it looks good. I'll select the lightbox link and choose image and select this image here. I can add a caption, so new image, click save. Then when I preview and I click the lightbox link, it opens up the image. So we can also link to a video so I have a YouTube link here that I'm just going to go ahead and copy, go back into the lightbox link and delete this one here. And here we have the video. So I'll click add video and paste the YouTube link in there. Click save, go to preview and I'll visit the lightbox link. And there we have the video that the user can play and watch directly from the website. All right, cool. So I'll close this and let's go ahead and change the text there. So we can say, instead of visit website, we could say watch video. Right, so the user knows that they're going to watch a video, comes in, watch video and the video opens. All right, looks good. So that is how to add a light box. Uh, instead of just a link, you can add a light box link and open up uh, a video within the site. Nice. So the next thing I'm going to cover is the interactions within the template. Uh, we can see throughout the template that there's a lot of interactions. So I'll go ahead and cover that quickly where we can find them and how to edit them. All right, so I'll go ahead and go back to the top here. Let's go ahead and collapse the navigator. So the first interaction or the first animation we see is that panel coming in from the top to the bottom and then all the text and the hero image coming in. Um, so this is a page load animation. So to access interactions, it's this lightning bolt symbol here in the upper right. And here we have the page load animation. So if I click it, we have the animation here and I can play it and we can see how the animation comes in. So here we have all the elements. We can change the timing. We can change the easing of all of this. Um, so if I go to the template, I'm not going to cover interactions uh, too much in detail in this section uh, because it is an in-depth topic, but on my site, I have plenty of interactions and the earlier videos on my YouTube channel cover how to use interactions. And if I go to the template here, so if I view the template on the template details page, there's a video. So let me scroll down here. There's a uh, video here that goes to the interactions and animations video course in Webflow in the Webflow University that covers how to use interactions in more detail. All right, so here you can see the interactions, kind of all the different timing uh, for the page load animation. Nice. Uh, so the next interactions we have, we also have kind of these uh, social media icons. These are not interactions, these are hover states. Uh, so if I select the social icon wrapper, and go to the drop down here and select hover. This has a hover state that has a padding of four. So we can see when we hover over the social media icons, the they move up a little bit and that's because of this padding here. Um, 
yeah that looks good and then also the color changes to cranberry so on hover <clears throat> hover the color changes and the icon moves up a little bit and then for the none state we have the transition applied so it's a smoother transition so it all moves up uh, 200 milliseconds and it has an, an easing of ease and out there so that's not an interaction it's more of a hover state and it looks good we also have a hover interaction to these uh, these links here so we see that underline and I can preview here as well to so take a look at the underline looks good and that's a hover interaction so if we click on the uh, the nav link block we can see that it has an interaction so we can see the elements have an inter interaction by this lightning bolt symbol here on the right and if I go to interactions it has the nav link on hover so I can play it we can see it comes in and it has the nav link on hover out all right, looks good. So that's the animation on the hero section. Then we have the work section. So if we open up the work section, we have the different project wrappers, and these all have an interaction applied. And this is the scroll into view interaction. So if I open it, we have the page scroll animation. So I'll go ahead and preview, and this is what it looks like. So when I play, the block reveal effect occurs, and all the text appears. And so we just applied some opacity and movement to these elements to create that effect. So we can go in, again, change the timing, change the opacity to kind of match the style of your site. Okay, looks good. And this is applied to all layouts, as we can see here, desktop and above, tablet, phone landscape, and phone portrait. Cool, so that's the interaction for the work section. Then we have the experience section. So I'll go ahead and open this up. We can see that the accordion wrapper has an interaction applied. So if we go ahead and select it, it has the accordion on hover. So when I play, it opens up the accordion when we hover over this top section here. It opens it up so we can see more content within the accordion there. All right, looks good and nice. Perfect, and then we have the accordion on hover out. So when we hover out, uh, the the accordion collapses to create, uh, yeah, this effect here. Nice, looks good. So the next section, the contact section does not have any, any interactions and looks good. Awesome, so that is the interactions within the template. Um, again, the interactions can be accessed by clicking on this lightning bolt symbol here in the upper right. And um, you can see what elements have an interaction by the lightning bolt symbol here in the navigator. Okay, cool. So all the animations are editable within the uh, interactions there. So the next thing I'll cover is the style guide and global swatches. All right, so within the template, we have a few other pages. So we have the style guide. And the style guide just lets us know what uh, headings are using what type of font and styling. So the H1 heading is using Poppins, the font Poppins with a 600 font weight. The H2 heading is Poppins 400 font weight. H3 is Poppins with a 500 font weight and the size here as well and the line height. Um, so this just gives you an idea for what the styling is throughout the template. And this styling is being applied to global swatches within the template. So when you add a heading, it automatically applies this styling. So here I'll demonstrate. I'll go ahead and click the style guide section, add an element, and I'll add an, add an H1 heading. So I'll select heading. And uh, as we can see, it already has that default styling applied uh, that was set uh, up here. So if we click on this heading and go to the, um, the selector here, click on all H1 headings, we can see that that styling has been applied to this heading. So this makes it really quick to, uh, yeah, yeah, makes it really quick to design a template or add new content to the template because it'll all match the styling of the template when you add new headings and paragraphs. All right, yeah, so the same with the paragraph element. I could go ahead and add an element, add a paragraph, and it'll come with that styling by default. If we select the all paragraphs global selector, we can see it has the Poppins text applied with the font size and the line height there, the correct line height applied. All right, so that's the style guide. We also have some, uh, yeah, the paragraph element and some text blocks. 
and looks good. And then we have the global swatches, which I covered um, uh, yeah earlier in the tutorial. So as we can see, these colors have changed to match these colors that I've added, the cranberry and the lucky point. Um, so yeah, to edit a global swatch, you can just select the color, um, go down here, edit the swatch, click the pencil icon and edit the global swatch here. Same thing we did on the home page. Here, you, you can do it from here as well. And it lets you know what elements are using what color. So you have an idea of um, what colors to change for, for what elements. All right, so that is the style guide and documentation. Uh, we also have the image licenses. A lot of these images initially for the template are from unsplash.com and the icons are from Font Awesome. And we have a password uh, page. We have the utility pages. This can be customized as well. Um, right now it's matching the initial color of the template, but all of this can be customized if you have password protected pages. And we have a 404 page. Uh, so that so yeah, if there's a link on the site that um, is not accessible, or let's say the page has been deleted, the user will be directed to this 404 page. And again, this can be customized. Right now, it's customized to match the styling of the uh, template, the the initial colors of the template. Nice. So that is the style guide and global swatches. The next thing we'll cover is search engine optimization. All right, so search engine optimization is fairly straightforward here in Webflow. We'll just open up the pages panel, open up the page settings, and here we have the uh, the SEO settings right here. So here I can change the title uh, for how it'll appear in the search engines. So here I can say Adrian Murphy Webflow Portfolio Template. And I can give it a description. So I can say this is a great template for designers to showcase their, their portfolio. All right, so this is how this text will appear in the, uh, in the search engines. Uh, we also have open graph settings. So this is for like Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, so yeah, that's one thing that, uh, you know, quite a few users, quite a few users want their site to, to look good on Facebook and LinkedIn when they share it. So we can add all that information here. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the title from the SEO title tag. So it says Adrian Murphy Webflow Portfolio Template and the same description that, it, that I added up here. Then we have the Open Graph Image URL. So this part's important. Um, so the requested size is 1200 by 630. Uh, for now, I'm just going to grab uh, an image from the assets panel. So I'll go ahead and save this here. I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, this image that I used for the hero image. So I'm going to open up the image and I'm, gonna I'm going to grab the link for the image. So I'll go ahead and preview here and hit command C to copy the link here at the top. So all I did was click this kind of arrow icon to open it up in the browser. That way I can copy the link. Now I can go back to page settings, edit the page settings, and paste the open graph image URL, which I just copied, paste it in there. Um, so that's not the great, you know, not great dim dimensions for uh, this this open graph image. So what I would do is I would crop it in like Illustrator or or Preview within Mac. Um, so just as an example, I'll go ahead and yeah, open this image with Preview, and I would just kind of crop it to be yeah, six thirty. 630 by or 1200 by 630 there and then I would upload the image and then grab that URL for that image in there and paste it in here and this would ensure that when I share it on Facebook or LinkedIn that it looks good and it has the proper image on those social media channels all right so that is SEO uh, we can also add custom code to the project you do need an account plan um, or a site plan added to the project in order to add custom code uh, Webflow doesn't verify custom code, so anything you add here, um, I'd just make sure that it's correct so it doesn't break anything within the site. All right, cool. So that is search engine optimization. Uh, the next thing I'll cover is the documentation for the site. Uh, so let's go ahead and quickly look at that. All right, so to access the template, yeah, we can go to webdevforyou.com. 
then we can go to the template right up here, uh, yeah, the Adrian Murphy template. And then here we can preview the template, we can preview in the Webflow Designer, and then we have the documentation, which we can open up and take a look. So prior to purchasing the template, you can take a look at the documentation uh, to ensure that you'll be able to kind of work well with the template. So everything I've covered in this tutorial is covered here in the documentation. Uh, we have the theme information, we have, you know, what's included, the typography, what, you know, the different, yeah, typography used in the template, and it looks good. And we have the color usage. Uh, so again, that's also in the template within the style guide, and nice. And then we have the next section here, changing project images, which I went over. Um, it's, you know, working with the combo classes and swapping out the images there and hiding the overlay initially so you can see the image. And then we have the adding more items in the experience section so yeah the accordion wrapper and this just goes over that the last accordion wrapper has a combo class of last so you just want to apply that combo class to the last uh, accordion wrapper there so the underline gets removed and then credits the different images um, the different resources used for the images and the icons here were from font awesome nice so this documentation is accessible from the template details page so you can take a look kind of review how to use the template. Uh, but yeah, everything I've covered in this tutorial is also covered in the documentation. Um, I kind of went a bit more in depth in this tutorial, uh, but it's a good overview of how to use the template here. All right, so the next thing I'll cover is support for the template. So to get support for the template, uh, you can simply contact me at templates at webdevforyou.com. Um, so if you purchase the template and you need help with it, definitely feel free to send me an email and I'll be happy to help. So it's templates at webdevforyou.com. Um, so again, we have the documentation um, as well as this video tutorial to kind of uh, yeah showcase how to use the template, but I'll be happy to help if you have any questions with the template. All right, so that is it for the Adrian Murphy Webflow Portfolio Template. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.